What's up and welcome to another episode of the Scott and Ian show on the SBL podcast. I just caught a glimpse of myself uh, in the like in the recording. I've got a beard right now, you guys. Now, look, there was a show that I played a while back where somebody said to the drummer, my, my friend Grady, who has a great beard. They went, nice beard. He had like a giant beard. And then they said to me, hey, bass player, nice starter beard. <laughs> and the whole place laughed never told that story before it was i was in a band uh, called oklahoma and we were opening up for jimmy eat world and someone said to me nice starter beard and the whole place laughed dude and what could i do i was like plugging in my bass i was like so is that why i'm growing the beard i don't know but what do you think you think i should keep it you think i should keep it going I know what my wife thinks. I also know what I think. I look at myself. I'm like, damn, I'm not sure. But I digress. Today, you are in for a real, real treat. There's no hemming and hawing about it. There's no debate. You are going to check out an interview with Ra Diaz from Base Space 2023. I had never met Ra before, and he came across our radar. He is the bass player currently for Corn, corn with a K, you guys. You know corn. He is the currently the bass player for suicidal tendencies, which means, of course, he is also currently the bass player for infectious grooves. Now you might wonder, how did this guy get all three of those sick gigs? You're about to find out. Raw is the blueprint. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. He is the blueprint for getting the gig, and you're going to understand why. I'm not going to give it up right now because you're about to understand why. Let me tell you what's going on at SBL this week. Check it out. We just put out a brand new course called A Bass Player's Guide to Electronic Music with John Davis Part 2. If you don't know John Davis, you're about to. Check out that course on SBL. It's incredible. John plays with the band Nerve, was a huge influence on me. He is one of the OG dudes that is doing amazing stuff with pedals and synthesis on his bass, right? You know all that stuff I do where I use pedals to make synth bass sounds on the bass guitar? A lot of it was inspired from John Davis. He's going to be breaking down synthesis, talking about all of his pedals, showing you how to do it. That course is available on SBL. Also, we've got a mentor seminar coming up on Monday, July 31st with me, you guys, yours truly, the A to Z of greatest bass lines ever. We're on L. There's still time. If you want to let me know what you think, artists that begin with L, I don't know why the hair metal band Lillian Axe popped into my mind. A hundred points if you even know who that is, but there are far better choices, I'm sure. So let me know either on the campus or on Instagram what you think I should be doing for artists. Great bass lines beginning with the letter L. That's coming up Monday, July 31st. We also have a promo going on right now. Oh, the trio of awesomeness, the power trio, the golden trio. I'm not sure what we're calling it, but look, right now, if you sign up for an annual membership, you're going to save almost 50% off of the monthly option. Plus, we're going to throw in a free month to check it out. And if that wasn't enough, what else do they get? Full access to the base space 2023 recordings so check that out right sign up for the annual at almost half off you get a month on us and you get all of the recordings from base space 2023 a hell of a deal even if i do say so myself which i do how about this a little campus news right now we're doing the 2023 refresh challenge which means pick up flagging new year goals i love flagging that is not a word that we use someone from the uk wrote this makes sense makes sense as the company is based in the uk pick up flagging new year goals or set new ones for the rest of the year and share your work you guys the campus is amazing it's an unbelievable place to come hang out with like-minded bass players share your ideas put your stuff in the campus you will always get replied from the moderators and other members as well right now this is cool so Pick up those goals that you've let drop. I don't know what we would call it, but we don't call it flagging, do we? Maybe we do. I'm kind of an idiot. You guys, enough of me. Let's get over to that interview with Rod Diaz. Base Space 2023. I'm sitting across <laughs> virtually from Ra Diaz, incredible bass player, entertainer, sideman, who you might know from playing in such legendary bands like Suicidal Tendencies and the Mighty Corn. 
He's also a force for good on social media, posting regularly and has amassed a hefty following. So go check him out on Instagram at raw underscore Diaz. And of course, catch him on the road with corn. And I'm sure many other bands as the year progresses, we're going to get into it today. Ra. I'm so pumped. I'm happy to be with you. Everybody clap it up for Mr. Ra Diaz. Now, Ra, you can't I'm hear them or see them doing by... this, but <laughs> dude, what? Hey, let me, let's do this because I, I only just met you today. Of course, I've been aware of you for a long time, but, but please, will you mind just take me and us back to the beginning and tell wow. me and us what, uh, what got you into the bass and what got you pumped about playing music in general? Originally, I'm from Chile, South America for yeah. those that don't know. <laughs> I and, didn't know. I didn't know you're from Chile. Okay. And well, I mean, I don't necessarily come from a musician background family. Yeah. But like my grandpa, uh, uh, specifically, they they were fans of music. Like they would be like listening to music at home. Yes. But eventually, when I was probably around, I want to say nine. 10, something like that, my brother started getting into, you know, I want to play electric guitar and this and that and Guns N' Roses and, and all that stuff. Yeah, oh, the best. Yes. Like, oh, actually, I was maybe I was younger because that was like early 90s and I'm 84. So, yeah, maybe I was like eight. Yeah. Um, oh, so cool. And, you know, at some point I see him having fun. And, and I mean, I always enjoyed listening to music and stuff. Uh, and I see him having fun with friends, you know, and I'm like, I, I want that, you know? Yeah, for uh, sure. So at first, I was like, what can I do to kind of, I didn't want to like grab a guitar, you know? It's like, my brother's playing guitar, I'll do something different. Right. So at some point, one of my brother's friends brought a drum kit to our house and left it there. So I started playing drums, and then eventually I got like a little, those like mini drum kits. And I started playing drums and I wouldn't say I'm a drummer, but I mean, I can keep, you know, a beat. I feel like you're a drummer. I feel, I like, feel like every bass player is kind of a drummer. <laughs> God, I'm a wannabe drummer. I wanted to play drums no, that, so I mean, bad, we all want to be drummers, but oh, I mean, we yeah. are kind of a rhythm, you know, tempo instrument, I would say. Absolutely, man, for uh, sure. But either way, you know, we started jamming and then quickly, I would say, it just I just gravitated to bass yeah, from, I guess it came from the bands that I was listening, listening to at the moment. Yeah. Which were all like very bass driven bands, you know, like, uh, yeah. Who are you checking out? Uh, well, my godfather, when I guess it was like 89 or 90, so I was like five or six. Um, he traveled a lot. And at some point he, you know, he, came to the States, went back to Chile, and I asked him, he said, just bring music or whatever you see that it's like what everybody's listening to, whatever. Yeah. And at some point, he brought me a cassette of Mother's Milk. Oh, dude. Uh, chili yes. Peppers, you know? Yes, the best. And, you know, that was it. That was it. It, it was the music, the look. You know, the I, re, yes. I mean, flee with the stuffed animals. Do the stuffed pants. animal pants. It's the Dude, best. Iconic. Like, I mean, like, icon <laughs> he created a monster. <laughs> These are my children, you know? That's incredible. Like, oh, I love they go it. with me everywhere. I'm sure some people might have seen it on Instagram. Like, I even make videos playing with them. Oh, but, you know, and then back then for the young people out there, you used to have a booklet inside the records. And I went, you know, uh, credits, and it would be like, thanks, you know, Fishbone, thanks, George Clinton. Oh, thanks. yeah. They so shout I would out be their like, influences. Yeah. So I was like, okay, who's Fishbone? Oh. And I would like look and, you know, went from one to another. So I ended up in a world that was like Chili Peppers, Fishbone, Suicidal, Infectious Grooves, uh, 311, Primus. Oh, and it, it's just so, so bass in your face. Yes. The, what an era. I mean, that was like yeah. the classic, most incredible. Sometimes I get sad wondering if something like that's going to happen again. <laughs> I you know. know. I, like, did, were you at all like me when I, so I'm older than you. I was born in 78, but I well, fell in love with Mother's Milk. It's kind of like milk. the same generation of bands. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, thank you. Thanks for making an old guy feel not as old. I appreciate you. <laughs> but yeah, man, I like when I heard Mother's Milk, I was like, oh, okay, this is my band. And it felt like none of no one else in my school, you know, like nobody heard Mofo Uplift Party Plan. Nobody in my yeah. town. I was in this little town in Montana. That's my and favorite. Nobody record, heard it. Yeah, it's so good. And then Mother's Milk. And I was like, ah, got it. This is my band. And then yeah. Blood Sugar came out, which I loved, but then Under the Bridge. And now everybody, yeah. now the preppy kids in my, you know, in my like middle school are wearing like Red Hot Chili Peppers t shirts. And I'm like, no, like you can't take my band from me. I remember being so pissed because it felt like there was a secret that I had that was no longer my secret. And it just, yeah. oh man, it crushed me. Did you feel that at all with them? Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I felt that to that like extreme because also in Chile, we kind of got everything a little later, <laughs> sure, you know, sure. and, or you yes. wouldn't get it at all until it was like already popular. Yeah, sure. You know, or the moment one of my friends found something, you know, it would be like, everybody would copy it. So it was, oh. It was kind of selective. Oh, you should listen to this. Yeah. Yes. But I, was just I mean, the best, I never man. like minded it. Like, I, it was, yeah. I mean, at some point for me, it was like, okay, now that it's popular, it's easier for me to get stuff here. You know? <laughs> yeah. That's so, a very healthy perspective. I was, I was just yeah. like, these but, guys are mine. <laughs> no, but I mean, I got to the point that I would like, <laughs> even, even my mom got into a point that like she would, you know, I was a kid. So we would like actually celebrate like their birthdays and stuff. Oh, dude, that's yeah. so cool. Like, oh, like tomorrow it's Flea's birthday. My mom would like grab a cake and we would like, oh, you know, really? just like, yeah. Dude, what's your mom's name? What's your mom's Katia. name? Katia. I got it right there. Ka Katia? Yeah. Oh, shout out. Shout yeah. out to your mom, Katia, yeah. man. That's so, so you know, And then so cool. I have a personal kind of connection to the Chili Peppers. Like I'm on, I'm on one of their books. I'm on one of their documentaries and Flea owns one of my bases. And there's what? like a... There's like a crazy Dude, story. Break that down. And before you even get there, can you tell me like, what was the trajectory you coming to the States and then like getting immersed well, in this, this is scene? Well, before and... that, but. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Yeah. Tell, please tell me what's the deal. Break it down. So I got to know. Well, I mean, I'm going to jump forward a couple years, but That's fine. You know, at this point I'm already, I, I mean, I was still a kid, but I, I would say I was a bass player. You know, that, that was my thing. Yes. Uh, you know, like, yes. Like if somebody would ask, uh, oh, you know, uh, which one is that one? The, the kid that plays bass. Okay. Yeah. Right. Like it Got became it. a it thing. It was your identity. <laughs> yeah. So, and Chili Peppers was like, you know, like, I don't know how to call it, like my Bible or whatever. Yes. Yeah. You know, like I sure. had a, you know, I had a, a band with friends from high school that it was just strictly old school chili pepper stuff. <laughs> you Dude, know? Like not, we would play the first the record stuff. completely. Oh, it's so And cool. you know, and we would show up to like a school and play and everybody's like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. And they're like under the bridge. And you're like, <laughs> yeah. Play like, that crap. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's strictly it's produced crazy. by George Clinton. <laughs> yeah. And, I love it. Yes. <laughs> so, well, you know, early internet days and yeah still handwritten letters and stuff. I was one of the very few first Chileans to like join their official fun, uh, fun club. Crazy. So I was kind of in, I don't know exactly with who, but in contact with them. Yeah. And then eventually somehow I ended up meeting online or letters, you know, yeah. uh, Hylel Slovak's brother, who is sure. the original guitar player. And then eventually with my brother and my godfather, it, we just happened to travel to the U S and we went through LA and I actually met up with him and we like spent a day together. He showed me like old memorabilia and stuff like really cool stuff. Whoa. This is like 97 or maybe 98. Crazy. And then, so I'm like, what, uh, 14, something yeah. like that. Yep. And then eventually in 99, I think it was the, Chili Peppers went to play a show in Chile for the very first time. Oh. And in 96 or something when Flea, you remember when Flea started playing that uh, the Modulus bass? The, of course. Yeah. Modulus so I had one bass, of those of course. that yeah. a Chilean artist customized it for me with like Chili Peppers like designs on it, like paintings. Oh, and, cool. and specifically paintings that Hylel Slovak did. 
like oh wow and like portraits of them and stuff i don't i don't i don't have it but uh so when they came i legit just went to the hotel and hoping to meet them and i brought Amazing. the base and at some point i my my you know my my uncle sneaked me into the hotel because there was security and all that he's like oh no he's with me you know i'm just uh, going to the restaurant stuff so like that great. yes so i just legit sat in front of the elevator for like hours until at some point and i was like playing in my base and everything <laughs> and at some point like i you know i hear the elevator open and i see this like like purple, like Puma shoes, like standing in front of me. Oh, cool. And I just like, you know, look up and it's Flea and he's just like staring at me. Whoa. And I'm like, uh, and I didn't even, also my English was even more limited by then, you know? And I just, I didn't know what to say. And I just like grabbed it and like gave it to him like this, like, <laughs> you know? And he like grabbed it and like sat An next offering. to me and like started playing. Oh, dude. And then, Somehow I managed to explain, it's like, hey, you know, I got all these designs on it. And I just, and I was like, I know it's like an expensive base, but I want you to have it because, you know, Whoa. I'm, a, you know, like I have other bases. I don't know. Uh, I want you to have it. And, wow. he, and he was like, I can't do that. And at first, then he said something like, what if I keep it and I give you like one of mine? Whoa. And I'm like, Sure, I'll do that. <laughs> and like, then oh, he like, oh, oh yeah, but I get then one it, of yours. <laughs> but then it was like, you know, actually, you know what? If it makes you feel better, I'm just going to like play it at the show. Wow. And I'm like, okay, cool. So that's it. Like, you're going to play the bass. And then he's like, okay, bye. Right. And, and, I, and I, I still had my bass. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Can I show up to a show with, you know, a case? Yeah. So I, got, I went to the show and I just had like a regular ticket, you know? And yeah. I tried to go in. They were like, no, you, there's no way you can get in with the base. I'm like, okay, whatever. I still went in. And, you know, I don't know, five, four songs in. We're, I'm just watching the show with my brother and, and a friend. And out of nowhere, like in between songs, Flea goes to the microphone. He's like, where's Roberto Diaz? And I'm like, what? Whoa. And he okay, starts wait like, a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> where is this? Like, where, Santiago, where Chile. is this happening? In Chile, okay, in Santiago. Got it. How many people are there when this is happening? I don't know, probably like 20,000 or something. Jeez, I don't know. dude. Maybe so like, he no, maybe shouts you out less, on but... the microphone. Yeah, but I mean, it's a very normal name. Like, it could be 100 <laughs> people, you know? Yeah, Chris so, Johnson. Yeah, yeah, you know? And I'm like, what should I do? And, and my brother is like, just go. And at this point, you can, like, hear him, like, almost, like, getting pissed on the microphone. Like, where the f***? I don't know if I can curse, but I mean, you know, like, yes, go for the, it. It's like, all good. Where the hell is Roberto Diaz? Whatever. And like, and asking the manager, like, Louis, where the f is Roberto Diaz? Oh, yes. So we kind of got to a security area and I'm trying to convince the security people like, Hey, he was calling me, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm the one. <laughs> like, and at some point right behind, just by the, uh, you know, grace of God or whatever, like, I think their tour manager walked right behind the security and they saw me they were like hey, hey, and they grabbed me and my friend and they brought us on stage and sat us like legit by the monitors like like wow. the side hills and like, we watched the rest of the show there and Flea comes to me and somebody's like where's the base and i'm like I, what do you want me to do like you know they didn't let me in with the base right so that was it and you know i got it signed and then i met like the band we got pictures and stuff and then they left but then in 2002, they came again. Yeah. And I'm like, I'll just get another shot. I'll go to the hotel again. Oh, damn right, dude. Dude, and Rod Diaz just showing up, man. This, this yeah, is such a great that's tale the, of like, that's the you story just got to show up, yeah. dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. It's amazing. And it's so true. Um, okay. 2002, what happens now? So they come to play a, a show again. I go to the hotel again and I'm, you know, I'm four years older. So I'm like, okay, I kind of know what to do now. Or... Yeah, dude, you're seasoned. You're a pro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm a veteran stalker. <laughs> and, yes. and then uh, at some point I'm like in the, you know, patio or whatever. And I, and he walks out and just like, I walk and I'm, and I'm sitting there and I, I don't really like approach him or anything, but he sees me 
and I had the bass and he like recognized, I don't know yes. if it's me or the bass, but he's like, oh, I remember something here. Yes. And we actually chatted for like a bit and he's like, oh yeah. And he wrote down my name and, you know, and uh, he got me like, you know, comp tickets and like, I'm like, okay, cool. And he's like, I really can't take the bass. You know, you're learning how to play. You want to become a bass player. Like, I feel bad taking it from you. I'm like, you know, that makes sense. So I, that, I kind of left that to the side. And I was like, okay, I'll just go and enjoy the show. And when I get yeah. there, you know, I, I go to like Will Call and they give me, a, they give me a, an envelope and it had like a ton of tickets. Like, Whoa. like, I don't know, 10 or 12 or something. And I'm like, what do I do? Bunch. And I yeah. just started calling friends that didn't have tickets. Hey, I got like whoever shows up in the next like hour or whatever, you got to free ticket. And when, Crazy. And, uh, so like, you know, more people came and watched the show and then, well, and then that was that. And then, I don't know, 10 years later. Or so by this time I moved to Mexico, I was living in Mexico. And that's where one of my friends, best friends in my entire life lives. And he's like, even crazier than me about the chili peppers till this day. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yes. Like he follows Number them around fan. the world and stuff. Yeah. You know, chili peppers are coming <laughs> and he's like, well, let's book a hotel. I mean, a, a room at the same hotel they're staying and see what happens. It's the method, dude. It's the tried yeah. and true method. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have people showing up to our shows. Like. <laughs> yeah. You've given away the secrets yeah. now, dude. And yeah. So we did that and, you know, eventually at the lobby, we ran into him. And we, this time we actually like sat down and talked for like, like, you know, it felt like an hour, but it was probably like 20 minutes, which is a lot, wow. you know, to someone sure. like that to give yeah. you their time, you know? Right. And I told him, he said, hey, listen, I'm a grown up now. <laughs> <laughs> I have yeah. bases. I have a company that, you know, uh, gets me basis if I need to, or, you know, I get artist discount yes. and stuff. Like I don't even, I haven't even played this bass in like, you know, 10 years or whatever. And I said, you just, now you have a, you know, the Silver Lake Music Conservatory for kids. I was like, I feel like you can take it and I don't know, get everybody to sign it or whatever. And you can like auction it if you want and get money for the, Oh, that's so cool. For, and he was like, you know what? I'll do that. And so that day he actually took it. And wow. then I kind of lost track of it, but I've, I've had a couple of people that, you know, know of the whole story in different countries, like sometimes send me photos of his bases, like at a show or something. And it's sitting there. <laughs> really? Yeah. So he, so he didn't end up selling it I don't, or he didn't I don't end know. up auctioning like, I mean, it? I don't know. It, this is like dude. two years ago. So I don't know what now. Wow. But I just went to one of their shows like last year and I got to be like side stage and I saw it and it, it wasn't in the, uh, you know, in like the it. It base was, it vault or whatever. Oh. So it, 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 it either be, it might be at the conservatory or somewhere in storage or maybe he sold it. I don't know. But if yeah. anybody out there knows, hit up <laughs> Ra on Instagram. Ra well, underscore that day, DS. <laughs> that, day uh, that I went to a show, uh, I didn't get the chance to do it, but I wanted to approach uh, Tracy, his base tech, and ask him because he probably he's been with him forever. So he I was like, knows. he probably knows what happened. Or, I didn't get a chance, oh. but at, at some point I will. Or, I, I mean, at, at this point it's on my base, so I mean, it's whatever. But what an amazing story, dude! It, and it's so cool to hear like you come from this, you know, appreciator of music. I love that you mentioned. Um, infectious grooves too man i oh, mean i loved those two like that first yeah. one and then sarsipius arc like yeah. those uh i mean robert trujillo's playing on that and all the skits it's and like, like a, dude it's so good it's and I, I just changing music to me <laughs> yes i you know? i know for me it was too it was huge and so what a trip it must be to go from such a fan and then to find yourself in the band corn like yeah, crazy. I mean, and I mean, and, and we you know, gotta and, talk and, about and that. And suicidal, because I mean, of course, suicidal. Like, yes, I met them as a fan as well. You know, like crazy, I legit man. was at the airport when they came to Chile. 
<laughs> so, so what is, so Ra, what is the secret for everybody that is a fan of a band and they wish they could play in the band and, and they're never going to play in the band? What is the, what is the formula? Well, the suicidal thing happened over, you know, uh, years, but you got to be in it for the long it, it haul. It just progressed till it got yeah. to that point. Like they, I I was, you know, a huge fan and I was in, in touch with other fans and one of their fans like work on their website and at some point I helped do something with the website. So I had like somebody's email that I didn't know who it was. Amazing. And so when they came to Chile, I was kinda in touch with them. Uh so I you know, I, I was waiting for them. I showed like I took like Thundercat out for dinner, you know, like like and Crazy. I took, I, I, I wish I, I was still doing it because I just, at some point my camera got stolen and I never bought another one, but I used to oh. take a lot of like live concert photography. So I, yeah, sure. You know, I took photos at their shows and in Chile and stuff. So we kind of became friends. And then, you know, this is probably like 2007 or something. Yeah. So I'm still in Chile. And then in 2010 they went to chile again and we hang out again and all that and by by now it's like there's facebook we are in touch kind of sure you yes, know, like Skype yes. or we would talk once every couple months or something sure mostly with dean the guitar player and mm. so they come to chile we hang out again you know all that and then eventually in 2013 i moved to la so i was like hey i'm here you know Amazing. and uh i went to one of their shows and we hung out and I, I also went to like one of their music videos, uh, stuff like that. And yeah, you know, and at some point I started playing with people in LA and then it, you know, it escalated to people that they kind of knew and musicians that they knew. Uh, and I just kept meeting people and playing with people. And then, you know, it got to the point that at some point they needed a bass player and, and he was like, hey, remember Ra, who, you know, we know yeah. him as a fan, but by now they're like, oh, he's actually a bass player. He's not just right. a fan, he's actually a bass player, you know? Yes. And, um, and a good one, you and, know, like, and, and they must have seen too, like along the way, they must have seen, oh, you're playing with bands that are like, oh, like, because there's a difference between a fan who is a bass player and a fan who's like a sick pro. Well, you know, like, I've, I mean, I've, I'll always be a fan. Like, I'm not afraid to admit it, you know? Yeah, like of if, course. if I That's if so I'm cool. if I'm walking down the street and I then I see Flea or or I'll I'll shit my pants. It's fucking Flea, <laughs> you know. Yes. And yes. Same, and same with with Robert. Like I mean, at at this point, me and Robert like even text, you know. So it's more of a normal interaction. But in inside of me, it's like it's fucking Robert Trujillo. Of course, you know? man. It's a big deal. Uh, yeah. So but eventually, they, they, but they, they just saw. Needed someone and, yeah. <laughs> and, and also. And, I, sorry, sorry to cut you off, but I mean, uh, no. also I, for like a maybe couple of years or so, I was constantly playing uh, like videos of me playing suicidal songs and, you know, uh, or, you know, I would hang out with like their bass players. Like, I don't know, I, I, I met up with like a, at a bass player live with like Josh Paul and we like sat down and went through stuff and, oh, I, oh, I used yes. to play this this way. Oh, I play it this way, you know? And, so I was oh, just kind of like best. in the loop, I guess, of their circle of friends. And eventually yes. they needed someone and it's like, hey, we know this guy loves the band. He's very familiar with all the songs. Like we probably don't even need to rehearse. Like, you know. And, oh, I mean. We, I think it, we rehearsed like once or twice and like next day we were on tour. Like something. Incredible. And because that's what a band wants, right? They want someone that they can count on. They want somebody that knows, that is like loyal, that's in that of course is a good player. I mean, and dude, talk about the long game, man, like <laughs> true blue long game. You know, people are like, you know, when you get people who are like, how do you get a gig? You know, I get people that are like, oh man, how do you get to play on records or how do you get to go on tour? Or how do you do? And I'm just like, you just, it's it just so happens. hard to answer, it's just... it, but, but it happens. I mean, this, this interview so far has been the blueprint and it's so hard to consolidate this and give this as advice, but it just, it, it comes down. Don't you think to like the fiber 
of you, the DNA of you and what you prioritize. Like you guys are buying cakes for Flea's birthday. I mean, that's the answer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, it's at like, home, not for to... him, but I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, but you have to be down. Like you have to be in, 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 in. And so many people like the idea of being in, they like the idea of getting yeah. the gig, but they're not, I, they're this not is the way into I, it and, like I, you were. Like the way I think of it is like a lot of people and not to like point fingers, but a lot of younger people, yeah, they want the status that comes with it. Like, exactly. Oh, I want to join this artist because I don't know, uh, or, or, oh, I have a million followers and this and that. But the way I see it is if a band believed in me, and he's giving me a chance, I'll die for them. Wow. Like, I'll take a bullet yes. for them. I'll do whatever. Like, you know, I don't care if they put me in a hotel or I sleep on the floor. And as long as we have a good show, I'm great. Yes. You know? And that's the way I see it. Like, like you know, if they're willing to give me a chance, I'll, I'll just, whatever it takes, you know? Man, and incredible. And I think that is something that maybe some bands or artists, like, appreciate from oh, me, you know like of course like they know i care like it's not like ah and like if if they ask me hey can you like learn this for tomorrow i'll legit drop everything i'm doing that exact second and just go at it they know? see that you prioritize the gig that you prioritize that you, it's that it's really just, important to you yeah, I mean, it's like what we want to, you know, it's what we want it to be our life. So, you know, let's make yeah. it our life. <laughs> you know, Did you, like, Rod, did you always feel that way about even like the gigs that you played that weren't with Suicidal, that weren't yeah, with absolutely. Corn? Like, even when you like, were Even a young... cover gig at a, at a bar, I, I'll take it like a personal thing. Like, we got to go and kill it. I got to rehearse and make charts and, you know, and, and you know, and because... That's what it's about, like, you know? Dude, yes. I've had situations that I have to go without knowing one song and wing it and, you know, and hope for the best. But, I mean, if I can be prepared, I'll do... A, I'll You're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. Man, it's such a huge... That advice of, like, take... Like, taking the opportunities and then treating every opportunity like it's a big deal instead of, like, oh, I've got to do this gig and it doesn't, you know, maybe it doesn't yeah. pay so well. And so I'm only going to give it you know, half like effort. And be Before suicidal, like, right before it, like, there was a time where I was doing it. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with Marty O'Brien, bass player. He plays, no, he's playing with, it, with Daughtry now. Oh, oh, yes, uh, of course. He played with Lita Ford. He plays, for, he plays Spectres, right? Yeah. So yes, me and him used to hang, used to hang out. I mean, I mean, now it's more difficult, but I mean, in LA we would like run into each other all the time and hang out and go have lunch. And, and he always <laughs> made not made fun of me, but he was always joking about. There was a point that I had like legit seven sh like gigs a day, <laughs> like random gigs. Right. You know, like like I would play in two different or three different churches in the morning, then go to a wedding. Then to like this wow. restaurant and then at night that bar, you know? Yes. And he was like, dude, like just keep doing that. And at some point somebody's going to notice that you're a hard worker <laughs> and just, you know. Yeah. And it's not that I, oh, I mean, I'll true. be honest. It's not that I wanted to do seven or five shows a day. I'm not shows, but you know, cover gigs, whatever. Yeah, sure. But yeah. It, at that point was also necessary to like survive, you know, and I'll do it. Dude, that's incredible. Like, I'd rather play once and, 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 and make more money than all those seven shows combined, you know? But, I mean, of course. I, I'm, I'm always willing to do whatever I have to do. You know? Yeah. And for so many people, it doesn't just happen that it doesn't just like, oh, suddenly, you know, you practice at home and suddenly you're in a great band. I think that sometimes people have this odd entitlement of like, if I work really hard, I'll get a great result. But man, yeah. for, you know, you have to slog. I mean, I, there was a period in my life too, where I was playing a ton, anything I could I'm in Minneapolis. And so I, the church thing, the wedding thing, yeah. all that stuff really resonates for me. I had to do that. And I, and in fact, I loved it. And I yeah. still love it when and, I play you know, gigs and, occasionally and, like that, man. I love it. And what goes with it is like, you know, I was never late for anything, you know, because I cared, you know, and, mm, and I guess that yes. shows, you know. 
Oh man, it's amazing. And, but yeah, well, and, well mean, also everybody knew that I wanted to play in Suicide, so they were all like so rooting cool. for me too. Like, they were, yeah, like the moment I told someone, it's like, hey, guess what? And they would like answer like Suicidal, and I'm like, no, no. But, <laughs> but at some point it happened, and you know, and dude, it's cool. Well, you make people want to root for you. I can tell. I mean, I feel that. Like, I want you to get all the gigs, <laughs> man. I want you to do all the best gigs. Like, I want you to play with everyone that you want to play with because just hearing your story and hearing how much you care about it. And dude, I just hope for you to like going back to that flea story. Like, <laughs> I hope for you that is going to be returned in kind with somebody. Like if there were a bass player that showed up right with a bass that they had, that they had made for you. I mean, and maybe it's already happened, but I'm saying like, what a cool thing. I, I, I know that you'll give back in that it's way. There'll be a kid that'll like, want to talk to you about bass. It's funny because like to a degree now I kind of, I guess, understand what he was feeling when I was trying mm. to do that for him. Yes. And I'm like, Oh, of it course. must have been so awkward. <laughs> But <laughs> because do you get approached by like suicidal bass fans, corn bass fans? Yeah, yeah like, I mean, never and, to a degree of like take my bass, you know. But <laughs> sure. But I don't know. Like the things, like you know, for example, suicidal. Like I was before joining the band. Like I already knew all their fans, and I was like in their forums, and so it was like when it happened. Like a lot of people was like like you say rooting for me they were like oh it's finally yes. you know like this guy yeah. you know it's in the band so cool so it like yeah i've had people that come to a show and they's like hey you know i made this for you and all that. but it's like i consider more i consider them more like friends than like hmm. a random stranger showing up i love you and take this you know so it's yeah. not that weird to me uh like I, uh, sometimes it's like i don't know there's uh um I don't know, I, like I've been, I went to Peru and I got like a really cool painting in the, with me. And I, this other friend in, in Colombia made a mural with a photo that he saw of me, you know, and, and it's like, I'm like, that's so awesome. And then I think like, it's oh, maybe so somebody's cool. going to like go to the mural and like draw a dick on my face. I don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> you know? Maybe just your bandmates. Yeah. You know, but, <laughs> so I've had stuff like that and it's, it's a weird feeling. Like I, I, it's, I'm, I, I know. Some people don't believe it, but I'm actually like very shy and I don't like to be like in the spotlight and stuff. Sure. And sure. So sometimes when stuff like that happens, I get a little like, oh, I don't know what to say, but, but right. I mean, obviously I appreciate it like, like crazy, you know, it's like, it's yeah, insane. man. I yeah. mean, and I think too, like that appreciation I have found too, like when I've played with artists that that happens to, right? Like where I, people bring them art projects or things like that. I, I, I have never perceived that as like really creepy. You know, I, I've always perceived it as like, man, they just want to be seen. They just want a moment to, to like, just to show you, like I put time and energy into this yeah. thing and just, just say a, a quick hi to me. It, it's like, it's yeah, always even so if it's like from a distance, cool. sometimes you're on the go and it's like, Oh man, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, I just kind of, yeah, I don't like to be like one word that I hate and I, don't do well yeah. when somebody says it to me. It's like when they refer to me as like, oh, well, you're a rock star. I'm like, nah, no, uh, yeah. I, I don't, I don't believe in that concept. You know, like, I don't know. Yeah, I'm just a dude I, that I loves playing posts, bass though, and dude. happens to play bass for a living. And I, and yeah, it. but I've seen some posts, dude. You look pretty rock star up there, man. You look no, pretty I mean, rock star. It's killing. But when I say, when but I, I, I hear like, you, I feel like the word you. has like a bad, like energy around it like you're like yes like unapproachable or like yes this like and aloof that. And, and you're like partying all day and like sleeping around and i'm like far from all that you know yeah speaking of rockstar i i have to ask you about corn i mean i came up a huge corn fan so Me too. I, I mean yeah and i i can imagine and so i have to ask and i'm sure you've answered Another this base a lot so please you know? Yeah, I know, man. Like, what was it like stepping into those monster shoes of Fieldy, who had such a signature yeah. presence and sound? And was there any strategies? Like, I would love for you to just talk about I mean, that. Talk about how you approached the, that. The corn gig. thing legit happened absolutely out of nowhere. Hmm. Like, it's not like we were like I don't know. Like, for example, with suicidal, we had some sort of relationship that just grew yes. to the situation of like you want to be in the band. 
you know? Yes. This was like out of nowhere. Like at some point I did a, a, a video for Instagram with a, one of my favorite drummers, uh, Arik Improda. Yeah. And he plays like crazy stuff and he's very artsy when he makes videos, you know? So he's like, hey, you want to play bass on one of my videos? And it was just drums and bass. And well, I mean, cool. drums, he's like playing with like skateboards and breaking glass. And, <laughs> and I just did like a slap thing on it, you know, and I filmed it and sent it. This is like during COVID, you know, so everybody's doing yeah. videos. Every, everybody's online. Yeah, I, yes. I did like, a, I did a million of like Rush videos that now it's a vinyl record, you know. <laughs> and so cool. Well, either way. So we made that video and, you know, I don't know. I sent it to him, like my part and. I don't know, a month went by and like he never posted it, never said. And at some point, you know, we chat and he's like, hey, the reason why I haven't really done with, I'm not done with it yet is because I might get Monkey from Corn to play some guitar. And I'm like, awesome. Whoa. Cool. You know? Yeah. Eventually cool. that happened and we posted the video and, you know, at some point I see that, you know, because we tagged each other in the videos. Oh, you know, do sure. some drums, yes. do some guitar, do some bass, you know, and, and like Monkey started following me and I'm like, oh, cool. But we never like chatted, you know, and then I was like, okay, I mean, I don't know, maybe they know I exist or something. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe definitely. it's not even him. I was like, maybe it's not even him who runs his Instagram. Like, you know, yeah, who knows? The PR person. Yeah. yeah you right. never know. Right. So we did that. And then eventually I did another, I think it was like a rush video with, you know, with, Alex Kolnig and, and Charlie Benante on drums. And I, at some point, so cool. one of them uh, during COVID, all I did was like just making videos, you know, like we were like some of the first ones to like do that. And then it became like a thing. And I had like even yeah. brands asking me, how do you oh, yeah. make it? How do you do it? Like, and I started like teaching friends how to make this video stuff. Crazy. Uh, and at some point, Ray Korn's uh, drummer started following me too. Mm -hmm. And again, we never really talked more than like, oh, dude, thanks for the follow. Yeah, sure, the thumbs up, you know? And that was yeah, right, pretty much it. Right. And from time to time, I would see him kind of liking something, you know, just random stuff. But one day I was like at home and, you know, I don't know, it's like nighttime, like 10 or something, and I get a DM like from Ray, the drummer. He's like, hey, uh, what's your phone number? And I'm like, oh, here. And he just says, like, oh, yeah, somebody, like, uh, you know, somebody's going to give you a call about something. I'm like, okay, cool. I never, in my head, I never thought. I was sure. like, I like on his Instagram, you always see him, like, recording stuff with other people and, you know, sessions. And he's in Nashville. Sure. And like, so I was like, yeah. oh, somebody probably needs some bass and, I don't know, a singer or whatever. Right. And, well, <laughs> little did I know, next day I get a call from you know, I guess management or whatever, and they're like, Hey, you know, our guy is not going to be able to do this upcoming tour. And, and we were wondering if you were available and I'm like, what are the dates? And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to And at this point, they like the girl that called me never mentioned the band. So oh, this, wild. This, this whole time, cause I, I think she assumed that Ray kind of told me something. What did you think it was for? I just thought it was for her or like, uh, you know, like, somebody you know i didn't know <laughs> just like just know. like whatever also oh, i don't know maybe wow. i got lost in translation my english not the best especially when i'm like oh uh, well, you know oh my but i God. didn't get it maybe i don't know and, yeah yeah you know, and i'm like yeah i'm available you know and and uh, you know towards the end of the conversation like this is over the phone and i'm like do you need anything from me like you need i don't know do i need to send you something where do i find the music where you know, oh, I mean, if you have time to like, you know, film yourself playing a couple songs or whatever, like, would be great. And I'm like, Dude, okay, cool. So, you know, how do I find you kind of thing? <laughs> and she's like, oh, we have like a, like a official YouTube channel. I said, like, yeah, but what is it? And then she goes like, oh, it's corn. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm very available. Like, <laughs> very available and i don't know if i said that but in my head you know <laughs> of i was course. like whoa and i was like oh okay and, and i legit <sighs> like i was when when i got the call i was like leaving the house like i was in the car like, and i pulled over to talk and the moment yes. like, she was like, okay i'm gonna text you my email so you can send me the videos there i'm like, okay i legit called my friend where i was going he's like hey uh, 
sorry, I, I can't make it today. I turned around, went back home and oh. sat down, look up their latest like set list and pretty much send like half of it like that same day. Holy crap, dude. And then that's it was, insane. What a great story. And oh then my it was God. just like a like a waiting game or something just to see what it, also remember this is like in the middle of COVID. So I was like, this might yeah. get canceled. Like might not yeah, sure, of course. Even, yeah. You know, I was like, it might not even happen. So I didn't really right. think much of it. I never told anybody. Like I didn't even like call a friend and be like, hey, guess who called me? No, not I was yeah, like right. Unless it, it happens, like I'm dream. not even gonna jinx it, you know? Right. Right. And then, you know, like, I don't know, uh, you know, some time went by and at some point I get a, a call from like what n now I know it was the tour manager. He's like, hey, so when can you rehearse? And I'm like, what? And and that was kind of it. Like, <laughs> I never met On... them until the first rehearsal. Dude, were you terrified? Were you like, I, I, I would have been I was terrified. confident that I knew the music. Yes, of course. Because, I mean... You, pre you prepped I mean, hard. The thing is, like, at the moment after I got that call, I didn't do anything else but, but sit just down at home tunes. and play that <laughs> twenty four hours a day. Wow. If I'm if I'm going to the grocery store, I was listening to it on the you know. Can you? So, I mean, I know you have your base here, and I would love. Like, I, I wonder which is one? there something? Well, I don't know. I don't know. What do you want? What do you want to play? It would be so interesting. No, I mean, which to even base? See. I have. A, 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 I brought a few bases. What do you want to play? No, I was I don't know, curious. I don't know. If, what, what were you want to ask? I don't know. Well, I was just curious about like how you would approach a fieldy tune, like a classic corn well, tune. Like, so how what do you we approach did it? was there's another Chilean friend of mine called Andres, who is an incredible guitar tech, and yeah, he was actually working for corn, like for specifically. Fieldy and Brian uh, head. Yeah, yep. So I ask, I ask them like, "Hey, by the way, is Andres gonna be doing like guitar tech stuff?" And they were like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Oh, okay." So I know him. He at some point he did a tour with Suicide and stuff. I was like, "Is it okay if I give him a call and ask him yeah. about gear related Blow stuff? Down. Like, oh, you know, what should I bring? What What do you have? What can I use? What I can't use?" Yes, of course. So he helped me a lot to kind of dial in stuff, but honestly, we don't do much to it to get the sound like, yeah, it just kind of happened, you know, like, is like I got to rehearse, I say, so this is what parts. I'm doing. And they were like, cool. You know, and, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, like I, I think I made it in my head much of a big deal than what it really ended up being. Yeah. But, I mean, well, I'm obviously, sure. I'm, I'm like, okay, I'm going to get, you know, an active bass, uh, which I already had, like, yes. and, you know, the low tuning. And, and so a lot of the, the sound came kind of naturally from just doing that. The low tunings. You know? Yeah. What, what's it the, was more what of a string, thing, you know, it's what's just, that it's, B string go down to. It's, in drop, corn? it's what's, just a, like it's a drop. Got it. A. Mm, yep. I don't know if it can. Yeah, I can hear it. So a lot of the sound came more from the playing, I think, than the actual bass. Sure. Like, I don't know, oh. the, specifically the, the slap thing. By the way, this is a Schecter. It's all standard. Yeah. Like, other than the than the painting that Killer is Chile. It's job. not Texas, by the way. <laughs> um, Everybody's like, oh, Texas, yeah. huh? Yeah. All these, all these Americans um, thinking it's Texas. Yeah. <laughs> you great. know, um, uh, other than that, it's all like pickups that come stock, uh, everything stock except for the, the looks of it. Did you find that you would like scoop out mid range hard, like fieldy would we do and crank the, bass and treble? Yeah, like the middles, I kind of uh, take Duck them down out. A bit. Yeah, and you know, every show we have like fresh new strings, so it's very bright. And yes, but there's not a lot of science to it. Like a, a lot of people ask me, what pedals are you using and preamps? And I'm sure. like, I'm legit not using absolutely anything. I have a tuner. Really? Yeah. No pedals at all. There's just a nope. tuner. Yeah. Wow. Or than the wireless. And yep. Yeah. And I think they run it through like a, some sort of preamp to go to the front of house. And that's sure. It. That's it. I don't have any, you don't have some elaborate nope. pedal board. No, 
I was like, I'll keep it. I, I've always been like that. Like, I don't, I don't, the less things can go wrong, the better. Yeah. Like if I well, hear the bass cut out, it's either this or that. And that's it. Right. You know? There's no, you're not Easy. looking down at a pedal board full of wires yeah. going, oh my God, now what? Yeah. That's gotta but be I awesome. Know, like, so that like sound just, I, I think it just comes kind of like, even if I'm not slapping, like you'll hear it kind of also like the, the action is not necessarily super low, but it's kind of low. Yeah. So you just kind of hear the frets like, you know, but, right. Uh, it's a, it, and, and talk to me about like, because you're hitting the bass specifically in, in like a very specific well, way to get that thing I, with your actually, right hand. I, I mean, not just for this, my entire life, I played really hard. Yeah. You know, uh, to that point that I've, I've had issues with my hands because of it. Mm, <laughs> so don't yes. do it, you know? <laughs> uh, so that also helps a lot. Cause I, I mean, I could play like, you know, but I'm like, and that's the vibe. Yeah. Right. You know? Ugh, so it's kind of like a mean, natural dude. distortion, so to speak. I don't know. Yeah, you get the grind from the frets and the and I mean, you know, you've said Rush a few times. I too am a huge yeah. Getty fan, and of course Getty smashes mm -hmm. the bass. Yeah. He's right? like, I you, mean, you actually see him like hard. Yeah. yeah, man. I mean, he is just hitting that thing so hard. Yeah. And so much of his sound, you know, people ask again with Getty, people are like, oh, what are the pedals and what's the amp and what's the, but man, I don't know about you. When I was coming up and hearing all those eras of Getty, it just sounded, it, no matter what bass he was playing, whether it was Sounds jazz, like Rickenbacker, Steinberger, Wall, yeah. pff, like it always just sounded like Getty, no matter even the, what, even the because keyboard. of that attack. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, that's right. So yeah, man. Wow. Oh, that's so cool. So yeah, there's no real technical stuff that I can be like, oh, like I'm using this software. Special no, thing. Like yeah. nothing. It's just your freaking bones, dude. You know, and then the slap thing that, that it's just a lot of, or, you know, yeah. So kind yeah. of a combo of thumb, muted left hand, and then like rakes? Yeah. There's no necessarily a note or anything. Or even sometimes I do palm. You know, it's just like a percussive thing that it's kind of like, I don't even know if I'm doing it exactly like the way he does it, but it's kind of like his signature. Like he kind of invented that, you know? Yeah, Like man. a lot of people don't give him credit for like the bass player that he is, you know? I think it's oh, like he invented a, a style and... Yeah, and, and he has so such I, a thumbprint. So that's sound why I wanted to do it, kind of, you know, justice to it and take it seriously, and and not just that, oh. not not just the sound. That there's also like the, you know, the hip hop element to it and the vibe and, and oh, you know, just so fun. What does it feel like to to be on stage with that band, doing Freak on a Leash, and you know, in that slap break, and then where he goes go, and I mean like. And and the place must just that's, levitate, dude. That's probably the place when, must just. It's funny because like you you nailed it because like a lot of people think that my favorite thing to play would be, you know, that section the, you know that. In the sort of the the metal scat moment. Yeah, but actually, yeah. my favorite moment is right after that when you you say go and he's like go. That's my favorite moment. Dude, and it's just like, like that's it. Like it's not about the, the bass pit. part. It's like just that. <laughs> like the way dude, that riff goosebumps. comes in. Dude, I've got yeah. goosebumps all over. Like the, thinking about that. The way that, that riff it's comes in is just like it gets me every time. I'll never get tired of playing that. <laughs> oh my god, man! You what see a the dream. people just like it's amazing. Just like we're playing a show be. this Saturday. Now I'm like. <laughs> yeah, you're pumped for it. Oh, man. Well, okay. So going through your Insta, I mean, like Instagram has been, I can tell, like a big part of part of your life. You've posted so much. You're coming yeah. up on like 7,000 posts, which is wow. crazy. It's so cool. <laughs> no, it's not, dude. It's not well, sad. Well, the thing because is like, uh, I don't know if Instagram, just Instagram, but like uh, social media or like internet or whatever you want to call it. Like, yeah. For me that I like left my country, my friends, my family, that it became like a big thing to like mm -hmm. be in touch with people, you know? Of course. So it's that. Like it's 
at some point my Instagram was more of like a, almost like a diary. Right. Then just music stuff. It was like, Oh, today well, dude, I went and did this, you know? I mean, I appreciate it because it's, it, you're giving to the community, even if it feels like it's a personal thing or like it's your diary or whatever. Like I see you posting with positivity, man. Like I love it. You're, <laughs> you're a force for good. Like I said <laughs> in the intro, Oh, what do we have here? Oh man. Is that an Elric? I wonder if that, I wonder if I saw an Elric there. <laughs> Yeah, what do we have here? This was my main base with Suicidal. Yes, I feel like I've seen that a lot on Insta. What is that? Did it myself. <laughs> oh, it's sweet. Well, dude. I mean, I, I went to Schecter, like, and we, I brought like a ton of stickers and we just started cutting and we did it like it's a team effort. Oh, fun. Yeah, so cool. I don't even, Gorgeous I haven't bass. played this bass since like, I don't know, 2019 or, or maybe 2020. Yeah, so man. I don't even know if they're set up or anything. But. Yeah, dude. It feels good. Funky, like scooped jazz bass vibe. That sounds great. Oh, I saw you guys doing this one. What is it? Yeah, man. That's... Dude, isn't that like one of the funkiest bass lines of all time? That it's whole like... record is incredible. Dude, that whole record. Yes. It's, it's so funky, good. Funky. It's classy. It's. I mellow know. and crazy it's like has I everything know. I, it has everything like it even when really he's just does. doing this totally even just that is cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah man yeah. you sound great dude you sound great no that's not slap right Oh man. I don't know if I remember that. but Yeah, dude. Like oh, it's great. But yeah, this it's was great. my main base with suicidal and so on. And as a fan awesome. that I always was, like I put suicidal and infectious group stickers to it. Oh, it's killing. And I love it. Yeah. Well and death metal Taylor Swift right there. <laughs> but, <laughs> That's great. Um, That's great. And then to keep it in And then the, did I see an Elric potentially? Was that an Elric? Wait for this one. Look. Okay. This is the original Josh Paul Elric prototype. Oh, sick. It doesn't even have the logo, nothing. No way, dude. Yeah. I had no idea. It's, I didn't know he was doing a thing with Elric. Well, it's, well, this is like super back in the day, but it's like extremely active. So I don't know if it's maybe. I don't know if it's saturated. Sounds great. So the thing is like, Court did a, a Josh Paul bass. Well, I'm sure he can tell you the story better than me, but. Oh, I can't uh, wait. So I'm going to ask him all the questions. Court made a, a you know, a Josh Paul, the, it was called, I think, JP5. Okay. Uh, and I always wanted that bass. It's very hard to yeah. find. It wasn't like an expensive bass or anything, it's just hard to find. And, you know, since the moment I met Josh, I was always telling him, hey, dude, one day I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it and I'm going to get it and you're going to have to like sign it for me or whatever. <laughs> yeah. it, it's just like, I just always saw it in photos and I'm like, it just looks cool. And the one I was after was like a green one. They had it in green and it was really, really cool. And oh. one day I'm like sitting at an airport, like coming yeah. from somewhere with suicidal and I see one like on, I think it was eBay or something. By this oh, time, okay. I'd message yeah. people that posted videos. Hey, dude, I'll buy it. And they would never reply. Or, have, they, were, yeah. they already sold it to someone else. Sure. And I screenshot it and sent and texted it to Josh. I was like, dude, look. And I, and they were asking like far more than what the base originally was. Sure. And Josh was like, it's too expensive. And I was like, it's fine. Like, I mean, I just want to have it. And he was like, yeah. hey, what's your address? I'll just ship you mine. What? And I was like, what? Uh, so he did. And this is it. That's the one? Yeah. You have to be so kidding me. So the thing me. is like this the, is the actual Elric and not the cheaper version that Court made. This is the actual wow. handmade, the... you know, Elric legit thing. Whoa. Dude. So it doesn't even have the Elric logo or anything yet. Like it doesn't have a serial number, nothing. Oh, it's incredible. But it's, How cool. It's like amazing. 
Dude, you are showing us the blueprint for like living. <laughs> you know how people are like, oh, people live a charmed life. It's funny because it, it sounds exactly like the like suicidal infectious group stuff that Josh did. You know, like, <sighs> but you know, it's amazing. So I love cool. it. So hip. Uh, yeah. Dude, you're like you are the epitome of of the like fan that that <laughs> then all this amazing stuff happens to because you're loyal, true blue, like work your ass off, monster player, <laughs> all the things. Either it's like just somebody needs ass, to study but... your DNA, dude. Somebody needs to study your DNA and be like, <laughs> this this is how you do it. Oh, you want to be in that band? This is how you do it. It's yeah. it's so cool, man. It's so inspiring. You inspire people to send bases to your house, and it's un unreal, dude. You've been so generous with your time. Can I ask you to like, how can we as a community? There's going to be a lot of people checking this out. How can the base community better support you? Like, is there a project coming up that you want to hip uh, us to? Is there a tour? Obviously, I've mentioned your Insta, Ra underscore the Diaz. Best way the base community can. Not necessarily support me, but I just I'll just say try your best to be happy and keep playing. Don't give up. It's easy to give up nowadays because people want like yeah. instant result. And that's just something that doesn't exist. And if it happens, it's not gonna last. Right. You know? So just keep going you know and even if, if you join a big band or not just be happy with the fact that you get to play bass and and meet people and you know share i guess a gift and happiness with people you know dude that's all i ask from the bass players you he and and in true raw fashion he takes the plug spot to tell you to be happy <laughs> and live your life and it's amazing dude what a treat to get to hang with you so awesome no, dude, it's my I, I was telling you before we started this I'm, I'm a fan i'm honored to be here i watched the whole thing last year like i was actually dude. i think when, when last year i was in in europe when it happened i had yeah. like a crazy time difference and i still watched most of it so man that makes me so happy i've been following Thank you, you guys dude. forever so i mean it's it's really special being here that's incredible thank yeah. you so much i was telling my, and, my girlfriends like, i can't believe they reached out to me and she's like well, yeah, that's cool. And I'm like, no, you don't get it. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, and I told we her I was super it. nervous. I'm still nervous, but no way, man. <laughs> you crushed it. <laughs> you crushed it. Thank it you. was amazing. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And I can't wait to see what's next for you, dude, because it's just karma because of who you are and how you approach music and how you approach life. It dude, it's really inspiring to me. Yeah. It's I mean, really inspiring. That's the thing. Like, you know, like sometimes after the shows or whatever, like I, you know, sometimes people come to you and there's like, Oh man, like you're awesome. The way you play or, you know, like, how do you do that thing? And I'm like, I don't know. Like I, I, anybody, I don't know. Maybe I, 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 I don't see it as a crazy thing because I do it every day, but, at the end of the day, anybody can sit down and learn how to play bass. It's just yeah. a matter of how time you're gonna dedicate to it. How much or, you or, want it. Or yeah, or how much you know time you have to actually do it. Or but anybody, it's a m motion thing, you know. If if, yes. if I tell you, oh, that song you just do this, and you sit down and do that for a week, you'll be able to do it. You know? Right. It's not right. necessarily like a gift from God or anything. It's just putting the effort it's, in. So yeah, it's sometimes diligence. after shows, when people come and tell me like a compliment, so to speak, like, oh man, I you, you, the bass thing you did, it was incredible. It doesn't really, I mean, it means something, but it's not something that like gets me. But I've had yeah. people like after the shows come, like, dude, you just look so happy up mm. there, like doing it. And I'm like, yeah, I am. How am I not going to be happy? <laughs> Yeah, right. you know? It's like the best thing in the world. Like some people try to go on stage and like look mean, and I was like, no, dude, I'm all smiling when I'm playing. I'm, you know, you're telling me all these people came to watch us and they're like jumping, and I'm like, I get to play with these guys around me, and it's, it's great. Uh, yeah. Well, you know? it's it's the right attitude to have, man. It's the right attitude to have, and it's an amazing reminder for me to just to to be grateful, to stay in it, to stay grateful, to stay happy. Uh, it's awesome. You're the best, yeah. dude. Thanks for being with us today.
No, thank you guys. I, I, again, I, I, I keep saying it, but it means a lot to be a part of this. I love it. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll catch you. We'll catch you. I, I can't wait to see a show. I'm going to try to come out and see you play sometime, man. Yeah, I want to see that Anytime. infectious energy on stage. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> All right. Okay. Take care, Ra. Thank you so much, Have man. Have fun, everybody. <laughs>